A new patient group in Right Chat Nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian Wright here. Welcome into Season 6, Episode 84 overall of the New Patient Group Podcast. I was talking to Kristen the other day. It feels like we just put out the January episode, and boom, February is here. Hope everyone's new year is off to a great start if you're over there watching on our YouTube station. Hey there, appreciate everyone's support as always. Got a lot of cool updates to talk to you about after we get through the intro here. Going to be diving into an episode today. I have not done... Uh, an episode around this topic in quite some time. You know, we make constant references to it. It's a big part of who New Patient Group and Right Chat is I'm going to be talking about today. But it is something that I have not done in quite a while, and I thought it would be a perfect time. Uh, One, because of just the amount of shoppers and everything we talk about on here and and its importance of the topic today. But the other one is this is something that I'm going to be doing. It's not the exact topic, but it is around the exact topic of what I'm going to be talking about on stage coming up next week at the OrthoFi National event. And that's a good one. If you haven't signed up, try to get in last second. Going to be doing a workshop uh, there Thursday uh, with Oliver, Dr. Jamie Reynolds, and his treatment coordinator, then Dr. Alyssa Carter. It's going to be cool because Dr. Jamie Reynolds and Alyssa Carter, they're both new patient group and right chat customers, so they're part of the family. So being up there together is going to be great. Uh, You're going to learn a ton of stuff. So looking forward to seeing a lot of you at that workshop Looking forward to seeing a lot of the new patient group and right chat customers there. You know, it's really cool no matter what orthodontic event you go to. If it's a forward thinking event, you see our customers on stage. So it's going to be really cool to see uh, Bob Skopak, who's obviously a close friend of mine. You've heard his name on here before. He's been a guest on here before. Uh, like I said, Alyssa Carter, uh, Jamie Reynolds. There's going to be plenty of their new patient group and right chat customers up there on stage speaking or at least in the audience. It's going to be cool to see everybody. But this topic is so critical that we're going to be talking about today. And it's one, like I said, I'm going to be referencing and talking about at that OrthoFi workshop. And it's redefining what the receptionist role has always been. And today it's going to be taught, we're going to talk about the five new job descriptions of the receptionist in the new economy, how you need to look at that job position very differently than you ever have before. It is a big part, a big philosophy of what we teach. And part of our free course that I'm referencing, and a lot of you have gone to our website, and it's just newpatientgroup.com backslash free courses. Get our our long, in-depth, advanced free course, right? It's going to dive into a lot more around the phones and what I'm going to be talking about today. But make sure to get that free course if you have it. Today is going to be a game changer for your practice if you're able to wrap your head around really what the receptionist role is. There is a lot, a lot of outdated teachings that a lot of you follow out there. You know, there's companies that have made a name and get on and off the phone in two minutes or under. Or there's a lot of people out there that teach ask the new patient 97 questions over the phone. And the reality is, is those are so outdated, it is crazy. And I'm going to be talking to you about why they are outdated and what your mindset has to become around that job description. And before we get started, let's fire up the music. The chaos of owning your own business is real, but it doesn't have to be that way. In this economy, there's a better way to grow your practice and make more money while working, spending, and stressing less. And the recipe to make it happen is right here. Welcome to Season 6 of the New Patient Group Audio Experience, a podcast dedicated to forward-thinking doctors that want less headaches and more personal and financial freedom. And now your host, he's the founder and CEO of New Patient Group, co-founder of Right Chat, and a trusted speaker for Invisalign, OrthoFi, dental monitoring, and others, Brian Wright. Hey, everybody. Hope all is doing well out there. We just had one of the, the coolest parts of our program has become our mastermind group. And I just absolutely love, you know, when you talk about dream jobs and, and all of those I am living right now uh, my dream job. It is, you know, it doesn't mean that there's not frustrations and there's not struggles and you don't get mad sometimes. But the reality is, as it stands today, I'm I'm living out my my dream. And part of the dream always was when I started New Patient Group a decade ago was it's not a consultant. It's something that a lot of people out there just have a tough time understanding what we really are. And it's, it's a company that becomes part of your leadership team. It's a company that becomes part of your, your employees, part of your team. 
and it's a company that creates relationships uh, with you and your family. And I just had part of the mastermind group and part of our services as doctors coming to my house. And I just had shout out Dr. Rob Schaefer and shout out Dr. Mark Olson. Uh, that was awesome. And then Dr. Bryn Cooper came and met us Saturday. Uh, we ate, we got to go out to eat and we went and played some top golf together. Uh, some, some cool videos. That was uh, fantastic. It was a great time, and this message is, is to you three. Uh, you know, I appreciate your, your partnership, how loyal you are uh, to the new patient group and Right Chat family. Um, I appreciate just the closeness and the relationships and getting to know you better on a personal level, your families, things like that. That inevitably is, is such a big reason why our customers and you and you specifically are are so successful because of those relationships and also just the relationships that our our doctors have together. You know, and we had our, our mastermind in person meeting, which we get together once a year. Last year was over in Heldsburg, it's the Napa area, the wine country in California. You know, that was the first time we had done that. And it just the bonds that were created were wonderful. And I loved having, having Rob Schaefer and Mark Olson to the house this past weekend because they created a good bond when they saw each other last year. And just the, you know, the amount of clinical, you know, cases and talk that you two went to. And I like when I have the doctors of the house kind of give you, you know, some time to just yourselves to talk and build rapport and discuss, you know, different clinical philosophies. And obviously you all have you know, your way of doing it to get the end result. But it's so cool whenever you talk about those things together and how you just improve yourselves. And it's just a really cool group of, of constant clinical improvement, cl constant business mindset improvement, constant team improvement, constant online marketing improvement. And it's really cool. I really enjoyed having you guys to the house. You know, funny story for all of you out there. So, so Mark, Rob, and I are sitting in my dining room, and it was after we ate on Friday night. And I look through into the kitchen, and my wife, Kristen, has this, this weird look on her face. And I'm like, okay, what, what's going on? So I go out there, and she whispers in my ear. She says, Brian, there's a mouse in our house. It just ran by my feet. And I go, why are you whispering? And she goes, well, we have company. I don't want anybody to know. And I start laughing. I'm like, well, you don't really realize the relationship we have with, with our company. I'm like, just, just tell them it's fine. So anyway, we have a, a, we have a mouse, which actually woke up and he is now dead. We, we got him. It wasn't the traps. So we went out, she went out and bought mouse traps and poison that night. And then we're down there and we're setting up the traps. We're putting one below the oven and we're putting one in the pantry and all those. And, and I guess Mark Olson, you know, he lives in Leander in Wyoming. So he has a, a lot of experience, you know, with animals and, and things. So he's giving guidance where to put it. So meanwhile, I'm on my knees looking underneath the oven and Rob Schaefer comes up behind me and scares the ever living bejesus out of me. And of course we all start laughing about that. And those are just back to the relationships and the stories that we have uh, together as a company with the customers. And I just, that's what I always dreamed of uh, with this company. It's not a consultant and that's why it works. And uh, shout out to all of you out there that are, that are a part of our family uh, because it's just, because it's just awesome. There's some cool things. So we have our mastermind, speaking of the mastermind get together, uh, we have, and our mastermind is exclusively for our private clients, uh, ones that we are coming to your practice multiple times a year and having online sessions on top of that, and you're coming to my house. Uh, that's who gets to be in our mastermind. And this year, we're going to be having it in Williamsburg. Uh, so that is in Dr. Matt Josie's hometown. Shout out Matt Josie. Uh, him and Jeff Hines were at my house not too long ago. That was an awesome group uh, to have here. And so I can't wait to start, you know, getting closer to seeing all of you, all the MPG people uh, getting together again in Williamsburg. It's going to be a great time as a follow up to last year's get together. So that'll be really cool. I said on the top, if you have not registered, try to get in last second for OrthoFi's national event. You know, the last one they had, I was their keynote. That was, I think, 2019 before COVID hit. And it was the January, February, right before that COVID hit. And I had a great time doing that. So I'm so glad that their national event is back. We're going to be doing a really cool workshop that Thursday 
Uh, and I've already had some podcast listeners reach out, said that they can't wait to meet me and we'll see you there. So I, I, the, the feeling is mutual. I can't wait to meet you as well. Uh, it's always great, like I said on here before, to see the names and everything of people uh, that, that listen and follow this podcast. So that'll be really cool. Uh, we have, obviously, AAO is going to be you know coming up in April. I think that's in Chicago. Uh, we're going to be doing an all-day workshop there at AAO. Uh, for ortho fi and so that'll be great we did one last year went really well we're going to be doing that again uh, we have what else is going on we've got oh dental monitoring users meeting coming up in march and like i said at the front you know if you're a forward thinker out there and you go to any of these these forward thinking events you're going to see our customers all over the place and if you go to the ones that want to be like it's 1990 and want to act like you're the only practice people can choose from, our customers aren't going to be there. But you go to these forward thinking ones, ours are going to be on stage. So it's going to be awesome. Going to be speaking with Alyssa Carter on stage on main stage there. And then Bob Skopak and I are going to be on stage together on one of the side stages. So looking forward to seeing the podcast followers, a ton of the customers out there and speaking there. That's going to be great stuff. A lot of cool things going on. You know, we, we feel uh, very blessed. Uh, right Chat is growing like crazy, and it's just becoming a, a company that people, once they start using it, they realize they, they can't live without it. So uh, shout out to all the loyal Right Chat customers as well. Don't want to leave you out. So uh, good stuff. Let's get started. So we have a, a philosophy here, and this is how it is all our whole program is based off of, it's based off of several things, but one of the key fundamentals of what we teach is based off of an inarguable fact that all of you are in sales. Whether you, you hear that word and it, one, it, makes you, and, it, and it makes you want to throw up, or you hear that word and you've come to the point that you just accept it because you live in a, in a commoditized environment. Now, let's say you're somebody out there that is the first time you've heard this podcast and you hear the word sales and you say, damn it, Brian, I'm a clinician. I'm above that word. And unfortunately, there are those people out there that no matter what you tell them, they can't wrap their head around the simple fact that you are in sales. You're in sales. And, and here's the proof, all right? Dental Economics, uh, Chris Benson's company, other companies – have put out stats, and they all say right around the same number, is that people are calling upwards of five practices before they decide which one to visit. I'm going to say that again, and you've heard me say this repetitively on multiple podcasts in the past, but today it's going to tie everything back to these job descriptions that your receptionist must have, the training your receptionist must receive, the commitment to practice and accountability and role plays that your receptionist must get. Because inevitably, your treatment coordinator, it, it, or excuse me, your receptionist is the new treatment coordinator in this new economy. All right. We're going to be talking about these roles that your receptionist plays. And we're going to be talking about the psychology around the roles of, that your receptionist plays and why these five job descriptions of your receptionist is a game changer, a transformational change for your practice. We very much believe because of that stat that I just said, and one more stat, by the way, is that the stats also show that people now enter upwards of three practices before they decide which to visit. So you take both of those, and you could be on the other end listening to this or watching over on our YouTube station, and you could say to yourself, I hate the word sales. We're above sales. I'm just going to be the best clinician and everything's going to fall into its place. We're going to do things like it's 1990 and everything's going to be fine. The reality of the situation is, is it's not, right? That data proves that you must understand how to set your business, your practice up from A to Z before people buy to, the, to what happens after they buy. And all these experiences, you have to, to showcase that you are more unique, you're more innovative, you're more digital, you're more convenient, you're more customer centric, you're more hosp you're more hospitable than all the other options people can choose to spend their money. Now the beauty and you've heard me talk about this several times is that the better you become in those non-clinical areas, the higher price you can charge. And if you're new to this podcast, that's what we teach is prestige pricing. We want you to be the most expensive 
of their five opinions. And we want you to convert at an 85 to 95 percent level and have few to no no shows and be less chaotic and build out all of, all of this stuff in your world that's chaotic now. Make it streamlined where you can have more fun and enjoy being the clinician because the business runs on autopilot. But a lot of that stuff, just like the topic today, requires a significant mindset shift from where you all are today or many of you are today. And as this relates to your receptionist, I want you to understand five things. And these five things are what we're going to dive into individually one at a time today. Here are the five roles that a receptionist plays in the new economy. One, their job is to get people to schedule. Now you say, well, duh, Brian. Well, here's what we're going to be diving into a little bit more today once I run through these five. The reality is, and this is the mistake many of you make, just because the phone rings and it's a new patient doesn't mean they're calling to schedule. Going back to people are calling upwards of five. They could be calling and asking, do you do Invisalign? They could be calling and asking, what do you charge for? They could be calling and asking, do you take my insurance? And the reality of the situation is, is based on how you have your receptionist trained today, they do not know how to handle any one of those situations in a way that is able to separate you from everybody else they are calling. The responses that your receptionists give are exactly to a T, exactly what other people are giving, whether you want to believe it or not. Two, they are to get them and sell them the value of completing their paperwork early so therefore the insurance can be verified prior to their arrival and communicated back to them prior to their arrival. More in depth on this in just a minute. Therefore, your business, your practice has an instant increase in a same day start. We're going to dive more important. We're going to dive into how does the receptionist do that? Because anytime you have paperwork not completed, it's because your receptionist is not selling the consumer on the value of completing it because the consumer thinks your paperwork is a joke. Why? We'll talk more about it here in just a bit. Three, their job is to get people to show up. If you have a no-show problem, your receptionist is the number one culprit of why. Because again, as people shop and they're calling multiple places, if your receptionist speaks the same way, if your receptionist answers questions the same way, if you use them as a data collector and an interviewer rather than the ultimate sales machine, there is no reason why if I as a patient schedule at two other practices as well, which they are, there is no reason why I should show up to you unless you schedule me prior to the other two places I've scheduled meaning that you scheduled me tomorrow morning and the other two places it was a week out, then you at least have a chance. More on that in just a minute. Four, it's to get them psychologically prepared to make a purchase. There's going to be a podcast at some point that dives much more in depth than what we're going to talk about today, but I am going to give you the premise because you may sit there and say, how in the world could a receptionist psychologically prepare somebody to buy? Well, there's several ways. And the reason why it's so powerful is the terminology, the psychology of pre-suasion, not persuasion, pre-suasion. And what pre-suasion is, is how you get people to be sympathetic and loyal to your brand prior to them really ever hearing your sales pitch. It works in any industry, especially if you're a commoditized one with people shopping and they have choices. We're going to dive more into the persuasion topic and the psychological power of that a little bit later in this podcast. And number five, get people to write a five-star Google review about your practice prior to them ever walking in your doors. This goes back to the persuasion. It goes back to verbiage skills. And no, what it doesn't mean is the receptionist asking for one on the phone. That's not what that means. It means being so unique, so powerful, so innovative, so awesome with your language, so proud of where you work, so 
passionate about you being the best practice to choose that people are so blown away they leave and go write a five-star review on Google. And yes, it happens consistently with WriteChat, my company that answers your new patient phone calls for you, or we're the emergency backup when you miss them. But it also happens consistently with our new patient group customers that go through our very advanced phone training, which today, if you enter in podcast 2023, you're going to get a 30% discount off of our on-demand phone training course that you can buy right from the new patient group website. And you will get two free months of right chat whenever you make that purchase. Podcast 2023. All right, two months free of right chat, as well as a 30% discount off of the advanced receptionist phone training course. Here's the mindset shift. We've all called places, and this is, this is where we can become really blind as business owners, because we've all called places and the receptionist just wasn't good. Or maybe they were perfectly nice, but they didn't put any value on why you should choose them over the other five places that you're thinking about. We've all called places that we wanted to buy from, and they didn't answer their phones, and we went to the next place on Google and bought from them or made a reservation with them or scheduled with them, whatever it may be. Yet somehow we think those things aren't happening to our own businesses, and it's this disconnect from an entrepreneur and a business standpoint that goes back to the opportunities that are killing you the most and causing increased advertising costs and more chaos and more headaches are the ones that you cannot put your finger on. Go back and look at the November podcast, if you're new to this podcast, that talks about the four new ways of looking at numbers and puts you through that exercise. The majority of what hurts you the most are the things that you cannot see on your paper. The three missed new patient calls last month that went and bought somewhere else. You can't put your finger on paper on those, but it just cost you $18,000 or more depending on what you charge. The very first one, getting people to schedule. Like I said in the beginning when I talked about these, yes, it's it's obvious, of course, the receptionist is supposed to get people to schedule. But what you have to understand is, is that it goes so far beyond that. If you right now have a receptionist up there that answers the phone, and this is, again, if they're hospitable, meaning they're just, they're naturally nice, that is one little tiny piece of the puzzle. When people get to see me speak on stage about this topic, this goes away, what I'm about to say. But a lot of you out there believe that for a receptionist or for any employee to really move your needle, all it takes is them being nice. And what you have to understand is, is that nice, you're right, is it, that's not a trainable skill set, right? That's an asset that you either have or not. Like you're joyful, you're pleasant, uh, you know, you smile, you can make friends with the wall. All of those things are non-teachable skill sets. But that is only one little tiny piece of an overall puzzle, right? So when you say our receptionist is nice, fine. But that is not what we're talking about. That's one piece of a thousand things that we're talking about when we dive into what this receptionist role is. Because as people call around, you have to be able to speak in a way that enlightens the doctor, enlightens the leadership team, enlightens your technologies, enlightens why you are the place to choose. So you as an organization doing this exercise right now, going through what are three to five clinical reasons and three to five non-clinical reasons that somebody should choose us and schedule with us over the other options. That is a exercise all of you should do. We do it with our new patient group customers. We do it with our right chat when we're onboarding because we want to know the edification topics. Now, what you have to understand is as you go through these exercises, because I've seen practices do it hundreds of times, the things that are said are usually the exact same thing. So if you did this exercise to a practice that's on your same street on the opposite corner, they're likely to say the same things that you do. 
But here's the difference. And this is why the receptionist verbiage is so powerful. Because as it stands today, those things that you write down are not being edified properly on the phone call. They're just not. Edification takes significant practice. It takes significant work. It takes significant commitment to change. For them to be able to eloquently articulate what makes you unique and better while on the phone with a prospective customer, a prospective patient. Now, here's the beauty. Let's take, let's say the iTero machine, just as one example. You know, it's the same way you should be using the iTero machine to highlight why you're better with your online marketing, right? A lot of times people who have an iTero machine, they use it as a records machine. They don't use it as a sales tool. The reality of the world, the reality, the reality is though, is the iTero machine is a reason used properly that people will buy from you. But it's also a reason people will show up excited as an example. And this goes back also to the fact that your three quote unquote competitors may have an iTero as well. But if their receptionist is not selling why that makes you cool or makes them cooler than you, but you do, now in the mind of the consumer, you're the only one that actually has one. Mrs. Jones, can't wait for you to show up and see this awesome technology. Our patients love it. It gets rid of those nasty, goopy impressions. We're all digital here. You're going to get to see a really cool 3D rendering of what your smile is going to look like at the end of Dr. Jones's treatment. All right, It's really cool. Can't wait to show it to you. Boom. Seven seconds. Powerful verbiage, and this is one example of many more that we can't dive into, but our course does, of how your receptionist is instantly making you unique, instantly creating an excitement that this person otherwise is not going to have about your practice because under normal circumstances, they view your practice as the exact same as the other five or the other four they're calling. Why? You have an x-ray machine. You take photos. You have, uh, you have your clinical degrees. You've got, again, all the things that I talked about last year on why price shoppers really exist. They exist because of you. They view all of you the exact same. So they don't see why to spend seven grand with you instead of five grand with someone else. They don't see it because your team is unable to sell why you're worth $2,000 more. And when you become a commodity... The reality of the situation is, is people go based on price unless you're the business that from the time they shop on the online marketing to the time they pick up the phone and contact you to the time they walk through your door to how you greet them to how you show them around your beautiful office to how the sales process is and the exam flow and all that to your digital workflow to how you present money. If those things aren't significantly different, significantly unique, significantly better than all the other opinions, the only thing they know to do is go to the cheapest. So part of this process and part of getting their mindset to a place where they know I'm going to spend more money is what I'm talking about right now. It's able to place more value on you compared to all the other choices. And that cannot happen once they walk through your door. It has to happen with how you're doing your online marketing, which is why our online marketing, our digital marketing team is so fantastic, why our customers dominate. Because we showcase you in a way that nobody else will commit to. So this excitement is already building, but you have to continue the story. The receptionist has to have the edification skill sets to get people fully committed to scheduling. Two, getting people to complete their paperwork early. Here's the reality, and it's why I'm sporting the OrthoFi hat today. You can see it over on our YouTube station. This is one of many other reasons I'm a big fan of OrthoFi. Ask yourself right now, do you have paperwork that they have to print or that is difficult for them to access in any way whatsoever, a combination of both? If the answer is yes, that immediately you can put your finger on a lost opportunity that's causing your no-shows. 
It also means that your receptionist has to be even better at what I'm about to describe than they otherwise would be if you had an all digital format where you could just text it out. A couple things, OrthoFi users out there, this is verbiage for all of you. And this is how our right chat agents do it when they answer for practices that use OrthoFi. This is how our new patient group customers do it that we train. It's a couple things. One, it goes back to the edification and the edification around you being digital. Mrs. Jones, I know there's a lot of practices out there where you've got to fill out a clipboard and it's a big hassle. Well, it's another commitment Dr. Jones has of really investing in the finest state-of-the-art technologies. We're all digital. We're going to send you some paperwork that's real important. Rest assured, we're going to look over it. We're going to study it so we can be best prepared for when you walk through the door. But do me a favor. Complete that early for me, okay? Get it done today. And that way, it's going to allow us to verify your insurance early. We can be all ready to go so you can get started at your very first appointment. And it's all digital. You're just going to click a button. You can fill, fill it in right on your phone. It's convenient. But very important we get that early. So can I have that commitment from you, Ms. Jones? Okay, that verbiage that I just said right there will instantly increase 80 to 90% of your patients filling out the paperwork early. Here's what paperwork, again, again, domino effect. Remember we talk about how the brain works in images, right? So how you speak must build the proper image. And that's what the domino effect talks about is the order in which you speak is going to create things either in your favor or not, right? And that's the, ch the words you choose, the order you speak, et cetera. What I just did was packed with different psychology, but it also edified how convenient and digital you are. It also showcased how you're better because you don't have to print out the paperwork, but it also overcame the number one reason why people do not fill out their paperwork is they think it's a joke. Why? Well, all of you have been to practices where you filled out paperwork and they didn't read it. They ask you the same damn questions when you walk through the door that you already did on the paperwork. Or you get interviewed and asked 30 questions on the new patient call, and then they send you the paperwork that asks the same damn questions again that you have to fill out. This is why this whole, we get insurance over the phone. That's fine. Like, it's not that we don't believe in that, okay? Okay. Like, if you can ask them their insurance and they can give it to you right then, of course. We're not saying not to do it, but here's what you have to remember. And this goes back to, are you healthcare or are you hospitality? Are you healthcare or are you experience? Are you healthcare or are you offering the unexpected and going beyond? The moment you ask, and these are the things that you have to remember going through your potential customers' minds. The moment you ask for their insurance over the phone, if they give it to you and you send them paperwork, whether it's a digital click or they've got to print it out, and it asks them the same question, now you're making them repeat themselves, you are healthcare. You are ruining the immersive experience. If they've given you that information, why don't you fill it out for them? Well, Brian, we don't have time. Well, if you don't have time, then maybe you need to restructure your practice and outsource more, get rid of the admin responsibilities, do more clear aligners, so you have time to focus on the customer. Because what kind of hospitality is it to ask them the questions on the phone, then send them paperwork that asks them the same questions again? Now, I'm not saying, again, not to ask them. I get you've got to ask their name. There's certain questions, of course, you have to ask. But the biggest reason that you have to get insurance on the phone is because you, your receptionist is not selling the value of them going and doing it on their own. And it is the reality of the situation is, is that you all have got to place your position. You all have to place yourself in their shoes because you're not the only place they're calling. If three other practices that they've scheduled with ask them the same questions over the phone and blast them their paperwork and they have to fill it out again, one of the ways to instantly separate yourself is to sell them on the value of completing their paperwork but not make them tell you right then. 
because they're going to do the paperwork early. And again, this goes back to they will do it as long as the receptionist sells the value of them doing it, why it's important, the fact that you're going to read it, you're going to study it, you're going to keep the patient from having to repeat themselves when they walk through the door. You're going to have everything ready, which, by the way, you heard me say, we want to, that'll give us a chance of everything ready so we can respect your time so you can get started at your very first appointment. Boom. There's another convenience factor because guess what? The other receptionists are not saying that. So now to them, you're the only place they can start at the very first appointment, even though the other practices they probably can too. But the reality of the situation is the receptionist isn't saying it. So therefore, your, your receptionist should say it. So therefore, you're the only practice now in their mind that has a cool 3D smile simulation. You're the only practice in their mind where I can start the same day. You're the only practice where it's digital paperwork. I just have to touch a button. Because what I just said, if you're a practice that you have to print paperwork and you make them go through all those hoops, your receptionist needs to be even better at selling why they should take the time to do that because if they've scheduled somewhere else where it's all digital, of course that practice looks better than you. Of course they look more advanced, more innovative, more convenient. These are all the things that you must think about during the onboarding process. And this all can be tied back to, even if you do have printable paperwork, your receptionist can still overcome that. They just have to be ridiculously good. They are in a sales role, everybody. They are not a data collector. And this is what happens all the time. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Cooper Orthodontics. Uh, this is Brian. How may I help you? Uh, yeah, um, I'm interested in Invisalign. Uh, okay, would you like to schedule? That's how your receptionist is doing it right now. Or I'm interested in uh, orthodontics. Uh, I have a 15-year-old daughter, and she's really wanting clear aligners. Okay, well, have you been here before? That's what receptionists do. Like, I know specifically what they're going to say before they even say it because I have on stage everything they say. So if I bring somebody up in role play, then after they're done, I move it to my next slide, and the next slide says exactly what they just said because all of your receptionists say it the exact same way. How much, is, how much do you charge for? Well, there's companies that teach it two ways. Either you never quote the fee over the phone or two, uh, you do. And you screwed both ways in this new economy. Our phone course goes into the three steps of overcoming price increase. Because no, you do not quote the total fee over the phone. And you also don't tell them, no, I can't. You've got to come in. There's an in-between way that's really freaking cool that we teach that works 100% of the time because it either gets them to schedule based on value or it gets them to go, no, you're not the place for me. And what you all have to have is the discipline to go, that's a person that only wanted a cheap price, so we win by them not coming in. Now, there's a lot of people out there that want a good cheap price that you can sell them enough on your value to where they will spend a lot more with you. But again, it goes back to, do you have hourly employees that know how to sell? Are you learning from real sales experts? Or are you taking you know, consultants they used to work in a practice turn consultant and they're teaching what they know from within inside the practice. The two worlds are completely different. Night and day different. So the paperwork, everybody, one, the getting them the schedule. They have to speak. They have to have the art of bragging skill sets to be able to edify and showcase why you're different. They've got to build excitement. They've got to make you stand out and have images in people's mind on why you're awesome. Why you're worth their time. Why you're worth their money too. Getting them to complete the paperwork. Here's the thing, you all know this. If their paperwork is not done prior to them showing up, it's a chaotic mess. You're chasing your butt trying to verify it in time. Like you're doing all these admin responsibilities instead of focusing on the person you should and that's the patient in front of you which is another reason why I'm a big believer and as a company is that you outsource those things. Those companies are going to be better anyway. It doesn't mean they're perfect, but as you outsource those things, the admin headaches go away and the people you do have inside your office can focus on a better experience, a better sales process. And it's easier to repeat because you're not wanting to cut each other's heads off at the end of the day with headaches and stress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
But if you have the paperwork done early, all of you know this, whether you're a high converter or a low converter, you have a better chance of closing that person right now if you have their insurance verified prior to them walking through the door. Which, by the way, the people out there, they're like, you got to schedule them right away. The reason why people say you got to schedule them right away is because the receptionist can't put any value on you compared to the other places. So if you don't schedule them right away and they get through the doors somewhere else first, you're screwed. But you are better with a receptionist that knows how to sell and scheduling them in three days and being able to go through a systematic process leading up to them walking through the door that's filled with psychology, experience, having time to verify their insurance. That is significantly better. We have the data. Now, if you offer no additional value in their mind, even if you offer more value, if the receptionist and your processes after you hang up don't, don't back that up, then they don't see any additional value. You better get them in in five minutes or they're going to no-show that appointment. You've got to get them to complete the paperwork early. Obviously, the easier you make that from a digital standpoint, the more likely it's going to be done. But if your receptionist knows how to sell it, you will see an 80, 90% adoption rate of them completing it early. If you're digital, if your receptionist sells it hard and you're analog and they've got to print it out, you're going to see a much better results than you see today, but you're still going to have people not fill out that paperwork. People don't want to deal with it. It's 2023. Why would you have anybody print anything out? It just showcases how behind the times you are compared to the other opinions, which goes back to the more behind the times you are, the better the receptionist better darn well be to overcome that. Three, show up. Look, this is an epidemic, I believe, inside healthcare in all professions where, you know, you get a patient and they're not compliant. Let's say they're not wearing their clear aligners right or they're not scanning with DM right, whatever it may be. A lot of other examples. There's this instant, and there's going to be a podcast about specifically what I'm talking about right now. There's this instant blame of the patient, right? Without understanding that inevitably there's two sales you all deal with, right? You've got to get them to buy from you. And then after they do, the sale really has just begun. And that's with really any business. It's like us. We see it a lot of times. It's like, we got to get you to buy from us. But two, then we've constantly selling you to remain compliant. It's the same thing in every industry. Your industry, the compliance is maybe brushing their teeth properly, showing up to their appointments properly, whatever it may be. But you have to sell them to do that. You also have to, you know, become... They're, they're combat. You've got to be able to get in and understand them more. You've got to be empathetic. Maybe the 15-year-old girl that you have at your practice that's not wearing the clear aligners properly, maybe your boyfriend broke up with her and her, she's devastated, and it's affecting her compliance. The reality is, is there's reasons people aren't compliant. You have to sell them to be. And if, you're not, and if they're not compliant, you have to look at yourself in the mirror. And you also have to look at a new patient no-showing you as your fault. Now, you may look at me like, ah, God, what are you talking about? And obviously, in a perfect world, we wouldn't do that. But here's the reality. Because people are calling and scheduling with multiple locations, multiple practices, the reality of the situation is, is if I go somewhere and they hit these touch points and I buy from them, the way God created us, it is very unlikely, very unlikely for me to sit there and then call you and say, you know what, uh, you know, Janice, uh, I went to a practice down the street, really liked them, I bought from them, please take me off the schedule. That is not what people do. So here's the beauty if your receptionist is your ultimate sales machine. And all the things I'm talking about is why they're the new TC, because they have a direct impact, a direct impact on whether or not somebody shows up and whether or not they buy. Direct impact. A lot of the things we're talking about already. If you get them to show up, think about this for a second. Do this exercise because a lot of you don't do this exercise. If you're an MPG, I'm not obviously I say this all the time, I'm worried about you. You're so far ahead thought process wise because it's a constant plug the hole. If you're an orthodontic practice out there and you had 36 new patient no shows last year, 
multiply that times your average case fee, call it $6,000, do the math. Do you know how insane that is? I mean, do you know how much money in advertising you're going to have to spend to make up for that loss? And I think many of you out there, the reason why you don't look at that number and then say, okay, let's go improve that by 30% this year or 50% is the fact that you blame the patient. You don't view it as a you problem. When in reality, because you're in a commoditized environment, it is a you problem. You created the no-show through your receptionist, not being able to articulate why you're unique, your receptionist not being able to articulate and create excitement, your receptionist not being able to answer questions and overcome certain objections at a higher level, your receptionist unable to enlighten why your doctor's better, your team's better, the convenience is better, the technologies are better, the whole process after you buy is better. Then you blast out an analog-based paperwork that they have to print out. You are causing the no-show. Now, if you're the only practice in town, does it matter? This stuff still significantly helps, but it doesn't matter. But a lot of you still function, and a lot of consultants, the way they talk about the phones, they still function as if you're the only place they're calling. It's not like that anymore. You can fix the no-shows, and you fix no-shows between a receptionist that is significantly trained on skill sets and verbiage skill sets to be better than everybody else they are calling, and then what happens after that call's over and before they show up to your door. That's how you fix them, right there. Our phone course dives heavily into that. And our new patient immersive experience course, which is at this time our brand new course that's on our site, picks up on the downtime concept. So it picks up after you hang up the phone and the time they show up, we call that downtime. And if you can get a receptionist like I'm talking about and the downtime concepts like we talk about, your no-shows will be 80, 90% better. But just be conservative with it. Just say 30%. You know, if you just got 15 more people through your door this year than you did last and you have a 70% conversion rate, do the math. That's insane revenue, everybody. Your no-shows are created first and foremost by a receptionist that is used as a data collector. Oh, yeah, your name, oh, your address, oh, your phone number, now your email. Have you been here before? Like, this is how receptionists talk. And you're, and you're telling me that you're okay with that? when the people are calling multiple other locations, and let's say they're only calling you, what kind of brand do you want to have? Mrs. Jones, I want to be the first to welcome you into our family. It is so cool you're going to come spend your time with us. We have just an amazing culture here. The team cares. Our doctor's amazing. I mean, not only is she the best clinician I've ever worked for, she's just such a good leader too. And you're just in fabulous hands. The technologies, you're going to just see an awesome 3D rendering of what your smile is going to look like at the end of treatment. It is something special. And I'm really proud of just everything we have going on here. Let's get you scheduled. We have a Tuesday or Thursday available. Which works better for you? See, what I just said takes one year most of the time to get most receptionists to be able to spit out of their mouth. Now, that was one little tiny bit of our training. And by the way, that was about 12 seconds. This is not about spending 25 minutes on a call. And by the way, there are consultants that still teach that. If you want a surefire way of coming across like a healthcare environment and a surefire way of turning off your potential customer, do that. The other end of the spectrum is getting on and off the phone so fast that they see no additional value in you as opposed to everybody else. Look, the receptionist has to create the no-like trust factor on the phone. There's all kinds of psychological things. So four to six minutes. Now, you're also going to be dependent on, okay, are you talking to a person that wants to talk to you versus somebody that doesn't? Because you have to personalize the call. If you get somebody that wants to chat with you, you better damn well give them the time but still remain in control of them, which our phone course goes into.
you know, one of the coolest psychological terminologies you'll ever come across is the halo effect. And really, that's what we're talking about here more than, than anything, is how do you get them so passionate and so bought into one part of your whole that they automatically perceive your whole organization to be that exceptional and that unique. And that's what the halo effect is. And we've all had so many bad phone experiences. This is why these things are so awesome because people don't expect a phone call to be something that's amazing. They don't expect that. So when you deliver the unexpected, you win especially in a commoditized world. You win and at a higher price than everyone else that you're, quote unquote, think you're competing with. What the halo effect is, you know, if you buy a car and let's say, whatever, you buy a, a Chevrolet Tahoe and for whatever reason that car gives you, you know, and it's the first one you've ever had. It's different if you've had three of them and they were very reliable before. But let's say this is the first one you've had and it just gives you all kinds of issues. You know, you got stuck with a lemon, which every car maker and manufacturer, you know, they're few and far between, but they happen for all kinds of various reasons. They happen. So if you get stuck with the lemon and it's the first time you've owned a Tahoe, your instant perception of, of Tahoes, it's not good. Like this car is a piece of junk, right? And you're probably even thinking about that of the whole Chevrolet brand. Well, that's the halo effect, and that's an example of how it works against you, which happens to so many of you out there from a, from a overall what your receptionist is doing to your brand. It's that people go, eh, it's the same, like whatever, you know, blah. So that's what I'm going to get when I walk in too. That's the halo effect. It can work against you just like the Chevrolet Tahoe example, but it can also work in your favor. Meaning that let's say you buy a Tahoe and it's the first time, same example, but now that Tahoe's awesome. Runs great, you like the way it rides, you like the way it feels. Maybe you use it for off-roading, it does the trick there. Maybe you're up to 70,000 miles and it's never caused a problem, you just love it. Well, guess what that person who bought is thinking? Boy, Chevrolet is awesome and boy, these Tahoes, whew, love them. It's the same car different perception based on your own experience with it. That is what your receptionist and everything that happens prior to the people walking through the door that we're not really going to dive much into today. This is all the power of persuasion that I talked about, everybody. Is that how you get somebody to schedule, just because they schedule with you doesn't mean they're showing up. That's the other piece back to the first thing. Just because they say, give me a Tuesday at 2.30, it doesn't mean they're coming in. I hate to tell you about how humans are created. A lot of times, we'll, we'll just get out of things. Maybe I see no value in you. You're not as good as the other two places I've called. Ah, I'm out of here. We don't tell people those things, right? We just are going to schedule because that's easier for us. It's the same thing we no-show because that's easier for us calling and saying, I bought somewhere else. Or I just, you know, you just missed the mark. But persuasion, there's going to be a, a podcast probably this season that really dives in deep on this and all the things that persuasion, you know, that your practice can use to get people persuaded to come by from you. And the receptionist plays the single biggest role in the power of persuasion. It's getting people, like I said, sympathetic and loyal to your brand prior to them really arriving or hearing your sales pitch, et cetera. And you do that with the things that I'm talking about, how the receptionist gets them to emotionally buy in, the pictures that your receptionist is creating in their mind based on their verbiage skill sets, the edification that's coming out of their mouth, the beautiful skill sets that they have, the passion behind why you're the best, the, the, just the innovative technologies that they're spitting out of their mouth and showcasing with their verbiage skills, 
all of these things are building this power of persuasion of somebody going, wow, this is different. Wow, this is cool. This is so, she's, she's so proud of her boss. She's so proud of her doctor. She's so proud of her team. She's so enthusiastic about why I should come here instead of the other places. She's really selling the value on why their place is different. This is amazing. This is how the receptionist is your new TC, everybody. They are not a data collector. They are not an interviewer. That is not their role. Do they have to collect some things? Of course they do, but it goes back to your receptionist drives your business. They are the ultimate sales machine, and that is what their job description needs to be. It's also why they shouldn't even answer up front. Because what, you want them to be great with a door chimer going off? You want them to great with two people standing in front of you? Meanwhile, they're supposed to be, this is another reason why Right Chat has become the fastest growing company in orthodontics. Why? Because my agents are going to do everything you're hearing, speak as if they're own, your own employee, and it allows you to not have to go through all the training, all the headaches. Once you do train somebody, then they leave. You got to hire someone again, rinse, wash, repeat. But it also gives you the ability to completely turn your front desk into this concierge model that is customer focused. Again, dominoing, a domino affecting how things look inside your office to continue the story of your uniqueness, of your forward thinking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No shows are your fault. You can reduce them. You can transform your practice and grow at $100,000 or more every year for life if you've got people showing up. Number four is getting them psychologically prepared to buy, which I just dove into significantly. All these things that I'm talking about are getting people move psychologically to a place where they're saying to themselves, this is the place I'm buying from. See, the way you all handle the call today, again, it doesn't mean that they're not scheduling with you, but again, it doesn't mean that they're actually going to show up. But what it's not doing is getting people sympathetic and loyal to your brand, the power of persuasion. It's not creating the halo effect of this place must just be magnificent. It must have a commitment to doing things unlike any business I've ever been to. Forget just orthodontic or dentist, whatever the hell. It, this place is something unique, right? So again, how one part of your whole can get them thinking the rest of your whole is that exact same way. Same way with the car example, but it can work both ways. So the way I'm talking about today, what you're doing is, is you are getting them to go, I am buying from this place prior to them even arriving. This alleviates stress on your TC. If you don't have a good TC, this will instantly increase their conversion because of the power of persuasion. If you have a really good TC, now you're going to make it easier on her because they're already sold prior to them walking through your door. It makes her exam process shorter. Yes, it will increase her conversion as well because even the best TCs still can get better and they still lose sales sometimes, as hard as that is for some TCs to learn or hear. This is why it's like the Navy SEAL way. Every team member plays an equal important part. And this is exactly the same way. If the receptionist sucks, the TC has to be that much better. If the receptionist is awesome, the TC still needs to be great, but they don't have to be as good to still have the same conversion. Every consumer interaction that your employees have either move the needle forward, stall it, or move it backwards. And I will argue if it stalls it, it is moving it backwards. The power of the verbiage skills, using your receptionist to sell, that is what the receptionist role is. That is how the power of persuasion is created. It's how the halo effect works in your favor. These skill sets go into the domino effect of how you speak. Again, why that's important is because the mind works in images. And if you're building a constant, imagine a cartoon with these image bubbles popping out of their heads, right? I always imagine a little cartoon of the people just having these images, but the reality is that's how the brain works. Every word I've spoken to you today, your, your mind flips it to an image. 
And if it's flipping it to an image of value, I'm doing my job. If it's, if it's not, I'm not doing my job. And that's the same way when you speak in your doctor exam, same way the TC and her exam, same way with the new patient phone call, existing patient phone call, new patient experience, your online marketing. All these things have to build an image of why you're significantly superior to the other places I'm shopping. And if you accomplish that, your scheduling rate goes up. Your no-shows go down, your conversion goes up, your reviews go up, your referrals go up, and all while you're increasing your prices. Meanwhile, the other people in town are spending more and more on advertising and thinking they're having to cheapen the price. That's how you kick everyone's butt inside your doors. Even inside your doors drives your online marketing behavior. Our online marketing team and our digital marketing is amazing. It's absolutely amazing, but it's a partnership because if you as a practice don't coordinate with us and, and carry out our marketing plan for you and help us create the content, then we can't post and make you look awesome. Yeah, we have professional photography teams that come in, but also just the consistency during the times they're not in there, you got to do your part. This is all going into this. And that's going to be a podcast for later on when I talk about specifically the power of persuasion versus persuasion. The last one is getting people to write a five-star review. Look, never before from a consumer standpoint in, every, in, in any industry have consumers demanded experience more. But the ironic thing about this is, is that never... There's never been a time where companies offered it less. I'm going to do a podcast at some point called How Your Pursuit of Profit is Screwing Your Customers. And it dives into this a lot on how people look at numbers on paper, make decisions, and all it does is screw the people they're supposed to be serving at the highest possible level just to squeeze out some profit. Which in reality, what it's doing is actually you can't see it, but it's hurting your brand loyalty and customers are leaving out the back end and it's driving up your advertising costs. So the beauty of what we're talking about today as it relates to one specific part of the consumer journey is the reality of the situation is, and we see it, is that when you offer something like I'm talking about today and you really nail it, People will be so bought into your organization prior to their arrival, which again, reduces your no-shows. So even if you change nothing once they walk through your door, whatever your conversion rate is today, you have more opportunities, so you're organically going to grow. But you will see people go to Google and write a five-star review about your organization prior to them ever entering your practice. Now you say to yourself, and, and if not, here's something to plant and you should say to yourself, think about how hard it is, even with your happy patients, to get them to take the time to go do it. That's after they know you, maybe even after they've bought from you, maybe after they've experienced everything inside your office, they're friends with you, they're whatever. It's still hard to get people, even when they want to do it, to go do it. And this will show you how powerful the power of persuasion is and how powerful everything I'm talking to you about today. I mean, our phone course is eight and a half hours. So obviously, I'm not getting it all in. But I hopefully, because we're almost wrapping it up, I've gotten the point across about what your receptionist is really there for. They're also, by the way, not there to check people out, meaning they're not there to make the next appointment. That should be done in the back. That's a whole nother podcast for itself and works in every practice we've ever put that in. The assistants love it. Hate it in the beginning because it's more work. Three months go by, they love it. But anything you can do to free up your front desk, you should be doing. There's so many mistakes made on the phones, everybody. Miss calls. All of you out there right now, you're missing two to five, if you're a practice that averages 25 to 30 new patients a month, you're missing two to five new patient calls a month while you're open during regular business hours. How do I know that? We have the data with WriteChat. If you have an answering service, no one's leaving a voicemail. They're going right down to the next doctor on the list and buying from them. Oh, the reason why WriteChat exists, your emergency backup. 
we speak as your employee. We remote into your software. We schedule the new patient. New patient never knows a third party answered. You get two or three more new patients a month, sometimes five or 10, depending on your size, and sometimes 20 or 30 more a month, depending on your size, without lifting a finger. And the more chaos that goes up at your front desk, people checking out, door chimer going off, waiting room packed, people you know, going, hey, I, I got to leave. I want to make my next appointment. Whatever it is, the more that happens, the more calls you miss. The ironic thing about missed calls, that's not what today is about, but the ironic thing about it is, is the most calls you miss are during normal business hours when your answering service isn't even turned on. But even if you get the answering service, people just hang up. It, they're a total waste of money today. I cannot believe there's anybody that uses an answering service that just takes a voicemail. I cannot believe it. All of you done this where you call someone on Google, doesn't matter what industry, they don't answer. You go to the next one on Google that's got the next best five-star reviews or close to it, and if they answer, they win as long as they handle the call properly. You just have to redefine the whole way your front is working. And again, this whole, yeah, we're just going to, hey, uh, yeah, I want to schedule an appointment. Okay, have you been here before? Uh, yeah, what do you, well, uh, how much do you charge for? Well, we can't really say that. We, we need you to come in for an appointment. Or, you know, we charge $6,000. Okay, well, hey, my daughter wants Invisalign. Okay, uh, you, can you tell me more about it? Yeah, um, they're clear. And, uh, you know, you switch your trays out about every week. And we put these buttons on your teeth. Like, this is exactly what all your receptionists, as it stands today, that's how your call's going. Now, they may be more bright as far as like upbeat than what I just described, but what's coming out of their mouth is the same. Which means at this point in your journey, you are the same as everybody else, yet you want to charge more? Don't you see it, everybody? You live in a world that is commoditized as much as, you know, nobody wants to hear that, but the reality is, is they can flip a quarter and they can hit someone that does clear liners or braces. That is the world and it's only going to get worse. And by the way, the more corporations take over, the better your small business must be at these things. Not only do you have to be better clinically, but you have to be better in all the things the consumer can actually relate to. And that's the non-clinical, before they buy and after they buy. Existing patient experience, which should be even better than the new patient experience. Big part of what we're doing with New Patient Group now, and I love it. Because so many companies ignore the people that have already spent money with them. I think it was last season or the season before I did a podcast about the lie you've been told about the lifeline of your business. And that lie is, is that you need more and more and more new patients. And of course you need new patients, but the lifeline of your business is the people that already bought from you. That's your lifeline. Focus your attention on them and you're going to skyrocket your referrals, your reviews, and everything is intertwined. The more reviews and better ones you get, the more incoming calls when people are shopping. It's all intertwined, guys. It's a story you're telling. Every interaction tells a story of brand excellence or detracts from it. You got to constantly going back to that. And people will write a five-star review for you before they even know you if the call goes like I'm talking about today. If the call is integrated like my right chat agents do. If the calls go as well as the new patient group customer new patient group clients receptionists are trained. They will go and write a five-star review for you at a higher level than they will once they know you inside. That is the power of persuasion. It all proves the point of how powerful all this is. Let's review. And the main thing to take away from today, everybody, is your receptionist is not a data collector. And honestly, for a lot of you out there, the receptionist is you know, some mom that you just put up there. There's no training process. They aren't trained on sales. They aren't trained on verbiage. They're not trained on presentation. They're not trained on psychological you know, knowledge, which means knowing what to say, how to say it, when to say it. They're not trained to overcome objections. And then you wonder why they come across just like everybody else. Well, everybody else, it's the same. Be unique. Teach your receptionist how to sell, and you will not believe the difference it'll make for your organization. Their first job is to get people to schedule, but be excited to do so. Not just schedule because that's just what they wanted to do, or meaning that's what they thought you wanted to hear. 
right? Get them to schedule because they see value and why you're different. Have them excited by the time they schedule. Have them go to places unique, different. They're passionate. They've got cool stuff. Even though the other practices, again, may have the same quote-unquote cool stuff, if your receptionist is the one selling it, now to them, you're the only one that has it too. Get them to complete the paperwork early. That happens by one, it helps just being digital with an OrthoFi or some solution that's digital. Yes, that helps, but the thing that helps more than anything, and I see this in practices, I see it in practices, is that if you want a full adoption of people doing it early, you must have a receptionist that can sell the value like I talked about earlier on why they should, how that benefits the patient. Three, get them to show up. Your receptionist is directly involved in no-shows or people showing up. You actually should create a bonus system around that, by the way. Can't wait to talk about bonusing. Most likely going to be this year, have some really cool topics and podcasts about bonusing. Totally different than how anyone else will do it, but it will move your needle, baby, big time. Get them to show up for Get them psychologically prepared to buy the power of persuasion. And five, get them to go write a five-star review prior to walking through your door. And do you all think that if they go write a five-star review about you prior to entering your practice, do you think that they're probably going to buy from you? (laughs) I would say yes. If they've taken the time to do that prior to arrival, Not only are they going to buy for you same day, even if you're more expensive, like we talked about, they're also going to tell multiple people about their experience prior to their even walking through your door. I hope you enjoyed everybody. I hope you enjoyed today, everybody. The five job descriptions of the receptionist for the new economy. I want you to take this, run with it, make the commitment. Invest in our on-demand phone training course. Hire us to help you install it with a session of Zoom meetings to get it installed. Get a flavor, a taste of new patient group in that one area, and you're never going to leave us, all right? Inquire about Right Chat if you would rather have the Right Chat agents just do it for you, or let us train you with new patient group. Let Right Chat get the ones you miss. Let us help you, everybody. Implement these five job descriptions into your office. It will be a game changer for you in 2023 and beyond. Appreciate all your loyalty out there. Looking forward to seeing all the podcast followers, all the new patient group and right chat customers at the OrthoFi National event coming up. Thanks for everyone watching and listening, and thanks for your partnership and your loyalty. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Brian Wright. Thank you so much for listening and please visit newpatientgroup.com backslash free courses to get our latest on-demand video trainings for free. These are shot in 4K, exceptional quality, and we really want you to test out our content. So just go to newpatientgroup.com backslash free courses, sign up, and you'll learn some really amazing things. We would also like to answer your new patient phone calls with my company, Right Chat. We can be the primary and answer all of them, or we can be your saving grace where the ones you miss We will answer them as we're sitting at your front desk, your own employee, remotely log into your software and schedule that new patient, and they never even know a third party answered. It's a revolutionizing the answering service industry and honestly made call services and answering services completely obsolete because nobody will leave a message in this new economy. So if you use a call center or an answering service, switch to Right Chat as a game changer. We'll do it for two months free. We have our own in house IT team that will hook everything up for you. Your software, your phones, your phone number, you don't have to change anything. The onboarding is simple. We make sure that process is streamlined. And when you hear my agents answer that new patient call, you're never going to want your own team to do it. And it'll be a great training when you listen to us. We'll be a great training to get your own people trained as well. Okay, so look forward to helping you out. I ask that you please write a five-star review about the New Patient Group podcast on Apple or wherever you're listening to the podcast. And also write a five-star review about New Patient Group and Right Chat Online. That would really help us out. If you're watching on YouTube, give a thumbs up to the video, subscribe to our channel, put some comments in there how much you like it. And I would personally like to offer you your own free business and practice consultation with me so we can chat about your business and I can personally prescribe something that is really going to help you thrive in this new economy of competition, commoditization, and consumerism. Once again, thanks for your support. We'll see everybody soon. Bye-bye.